from last year here in Orlando in this Orlando 2024 Regionals Finals. Neil Patel is standing in his way. Turn one of game one, we see the face down of the Incineroar with the Ogre Pond for Neil and the Amoongus for Wolf. There may be the goats of this tournament competing on stage right now, but it is the Incineroars <laughs> that start off this match. Trading Intimidates. That Amoongus for Wolf is in a tough spot as it has to worry about that big damage from the Ogre Pond and potentially a flinch as well from Neil's Incineroar. Neil's own Incineroar also carrying the safety goggles, so a really rough spot to be in if you are this Amoongus. Notably, we saw Wolf's Intimidate Incineroar activate first before Neil's, so it indicates that it is either a speed tie, which we can't know, or Wolf's is just trained to be a little bit faster. Good info for both of these players going forward, because if you're Neil, you at least know that you are not guaranteed to be faster than Wolf's Incineroar. Incineroar on Neil's side of the field, going to sit back for a bit as the Urshifu is the Pokemon that takes its place. Spiky Shield onto that Ogre Pond means it won't be taking any damage from the Sludge Bomb from uh, Wolf's Amoongus. A nice switch there, the Urshifu coming in in favor of the Incineroar. Very unlikely for a Spore to be hitting that slot because of the safety goggles on that Incineroar. And now Urshifu threatens some big damage into the Incineroar on Wolf's end. If Neil was to terrestrialize his Ogre Pond, get that attack boost, return to neutral, and Ivy Cudgel most likely threatens a one-hit KO on Amoongus, which would in turn allow Urshifu to attack Incineroar on the same turn. So now it has to, Wolf has to be very wary of that play, possibly respond with a terrestrialization of his own, or even some pivoting with his own Pokemon. I was just going to say, we've seen a Wolf approach his games throughout the weekend with very defensive choices for his terrestrializations. We've seen the Amoongus terrestrialize into the water type. We've seen the Incineroar terrestrialize into the grass type. Both of those would have been a smart play here for Wolf, but he is going to start this turn off with the Urshifu, his own Rapid Strike Urshifu taking the field, and then a combo play with the water type terrestrialization on the Amoongus. Really smart defensive play there. This allows Wolf the flexibility to move some of his Pokemon around, keep this Amoongus on the field without at risk of it being KO'd by a big fire type Ivy Cudgel, but focus energy immediately coming through. Boosting the critical hit rate of this Ogre Pond, making it even more likely for critical hits from that Ivy Cudgel. Surging Strikes comes through into Wolf's Urshifu. Resist it, luckily, will not be taking too much damage, and this Amoongus will have the chance to possibly go for a Spore into Urshifu. Amoongus will also have the opportunity to go on the offense here if Wolf wanted oh. to play like the previous turn, but actually anticipated the Ogre Pond's terrestrialization. But because Ogre Pond is still a grass fire type Pokemon, that spore failed. The spore fails, and more importantly, the Urshifu on Wolf's end does not threaten super effective damage with surging strikes. Now, this Ogre Pond on Neil's end is a big threat. I believe a 50% chance to score a critical hit with Ivy Cudgel after that focus energy, which can negate any kind of Intimidate boost that we're seeing from the Incineroar. That's now minus two, but it doesn't matter at all unless it gets a critical hit. Well, Grassy Glide is not very effective, but it does get that critical hit onto the Incineroar. Oh, but the one-two combo Surging Strikes will be more than enough damage to remove that Pokemon from play. Amoongus does get the opportunity to do something again this turn, but what did Wolf pick? He goes for the Sludge Bomb. It will target down that Ogre Pond and bring it down Ooh. to below half its health and gets poisoned as well. So some good damage over time for Wolf but it looks like it's gonna be three or four turns before the poison alone would knock out that Pokemon. That is a pretty critical poison from the Sledge Bomb. It now means that if Wolf brings in the Urshifu, he might have the opportunity to KO it with an Aqua Jet before the Ogre Pond can go for a Grassy Glide. Of course, the Rillaboom switching in for Neil would empower the Grassy Glide to be a priority move instead of just neutral speed, but because the Urshifu is holding a Choice Scarf, Aqua Jet would still act before the Grassy Glide and possibly, possibly have a chance to KO it. We do, however, see Neil actually does not have the Rillaboom. It's gonna be that Chan Pao. So there's no chance for a priority Grassy Glide for this game, which means Urshifu on Wolf's side should attack first. It should attack first, but what target will Wolf pick? Will he use the Amoongus' more offensive capabilities once again, or will he try and finally align a Spore into the Urshifu, or dare I say, into the Incineroar, as Neil will switch in that Pokemon, 
bring back the Intimidate onto the opposing Urshifu and try and give this Ogre Pond the best possible chance to hold on, but it's actually just a Choice Scarf Surging Strikes. More than enough damage to pick up the KO there, and now Amoongus, the last Pokemon to move <laughs> once again for Wolf, will not be able to put that Incineroar to sleep thanks to the safety goggles. And now this is actually a much better spot for Wolf. Look at this water type Amoongus. There is not much left on Neil's side that can threaten big damage into it. Urshifu now has the option for a neutral close combat, which is nice, especially if you do consider the possibility of the Sword of Ruin boost from that Chan Pao in the back. But Incineroar cannot do big damage. Again, it's not even packing Flare Blitz. The knockoff won't do a ton to this Amoongus, thanks to it being so bulky. And now the Urshifu on Wolf's end, also not heavily threatened by much. There's nothing that can hit it for more than neutral damage right now left on Neil's team. I do wonder if Neil were to try and connect Knock Off with that Urshifu to remove the Choice Scarf, if that could be something to come in handy for him. That would also mean that the Chan Pao, I think, would have a favorable speed alignment against Wolf's or Shifu in the end game. You also have to wonder what Wolf's final Pokemon is. You don't have to wonder for much <laughs> longer as Wolf will switch out the Urshifu into the Landorus. So once again, saving that Landorus incarnate for the back, Neil finally opting to use that Terrestrialization. Terrestrialization comes through on the Incineroar, will make it a ghost type. So much easier to stand up to both the Urshifu and the Landorus on Wolf's side of the field. But unfortunately, won't do much for him on this turn specifically, as Wolf did opt to switch out the Urshifu. Fake out will flinch the Amoongus, and close Ooh. combat will be resisted by the Landorus. That was a great call there from Wolf. Urshifu's lower defenses as well will also mean that both of his Pokemon have a better chance of dealing that critical damage he needs. Now that this Landorus has come in on that close combat too, an Earth Power almost definitely will KO this Urshifu. So you have to worry about that if you're Neil. Your Chan Pao in the back really doesn't want to be switching in either because breaking that Focus Sash means that Urshifu on Wolf's side can come in and just KO it at any time. Again, this, Urshifu, this uh, Incineroar cannot be redirected by Amoongus because of those safety goggles, but you do have to worry about taking a big Earth Power. You have to worry about taking an Earth Power, which is why Chen Pao is going to take the field. Sword of Ruin will only be boosting the Urshifu's attack power here. Rage Powder means that the Urshifu will be targeting oh. down the Amoongus with an Aqua Jet. Even with the Sword of Ruin, it's not any damage. And oh. Earth Power takes that Chen Pao immediately down to the Focus Sash. I really like the Earth Power going into that slot too. You're tempted to KO the Urshifu there, but getting important damage on that Incineroar, or in this case, bringing Chan Pao down to just one HP remaining is really, really big for Wolf. It's huge for that Incineroar Wolf has in the, not Incineroar, Urshifu, Wolf has in the back. Because when Incineroar, when it keeps saying Incineroar, when Urshifu comes back in, it has the option to go straight for that Choice Scarf Aqua Jet. There is no way that Neil has to redirect that Aqua Jet away or prevent it thanks to the Unseen Fist. Big, big damage into Chan Pao here. You also have to wonder if Neil's choice of not having a Flare Blitz on that Incineroar will ultimately hurt him. For now, though, we do see a Rage Powder redirecting Sacred Sword will be activating the Citrus Berry onto the Amoongus, bringing it up to above half its health. A second Earth Power from this Landorus will not connect with the Urshifu, and Amoongus finally has a chance to consider, <laughs> you know, know, do I keep redirecting here or and try and let Landorus clean up, or do I try and anticipate a switch in? There still is the Incineroar in the back for Neil. There is, but I think if you're Amoongus here, your main job right now is to protect Landorus from that Ice Spinner, from the Chen Pao. Landorus is a really, really scary threat for Wolf right now, and this Amoongus is not taking much damage at all from any of these attacks, especially considering Chen Pao cannot use any of its same type attack bonus attacks for neutral damage into an Amoongus if it goes for Rage Powder. And Cineroar will take the field once again for Neil. Chen Pao down to a single HP of health. Sacred Sword oh, 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 will it. find its target into the Amoongus Earth Massive. Power, into the Incineroar to drop it below half oh. its health. And here comes that Sludge Bomb, finally connecting with the Chen Pao for the KO. Really love that play from Wolf. That is a big risk, because if Chen Pao goes for Ice Spinner on that turn, Landorus just gets knocked out, and Neil probably wins the game immediately. But knowing that Neil has to get rid of that Amoongus, 
Lungus probably opted to go for Sacred Sword. He opts not to go for Rage Powder, which allows him to get huge damage into Incineroar and knock out that Among not the, the Chen Pao with Amoongus. Now Fake Out is on the field. He cannot possibly ever fake out this Urshifu that is in the back for Wolf. That's really big because now, even though this Landorus can possibly get hit by something like an Aqua Jet or Surging Strikes from Urshifu on this turn, on the prior turn, on the, on the later turns rather, Urshifu can come back in for Wolf, not have to worry about getting faked out, and all of its attacks will land. There is also a Protect available to the Amoongus and the Landorus as well here. Do you have to play carefully around the Unseen Fist ability from Urshifu as that will allow it to deal damage through that Protect, but if Wolf is feeling confident, you can try and anticipate where the Fake Out would go. Instead, Fake Out is allowed to connect with that Landorus close combat into the Amoongus to knock it out. Both these trainers down to their final two Pokemon in game number one. Only two Pokemon remaining for both. Now this Urshifu on Nail side is down to minus one defense and special defense. Could come in very handy for Wolf, who will have to lock his Urshifu into its final attack of the game on this turn. Urshifu now at pretty pretty good health remaining. One close combat from Neil's own Urshifu might be enough, but at the same time, you possibly have the option to go for your own close combat, take advantage of that minus one defense. But Aqua Jet comes through first, KO's Wolf's Landorus. Landorus is down! Urshifu is Wolf's final Pokemon in this game, number one. Tries to use Surging Strikes to pick up the knockout on this Ghost type Incineroar. It will take all three hits, but it is now just Urshifu remaining for both these Pokemon trainers. You have to wonder, I don't think Wolf's Urshifu has enough firepower left here. It, there is no Intimidate on Neil's Urshifu. It is at full attack, and even though it is at minus one defense, it still is resisting the Surging Strikes that Wolf had to lock into, because if it locked into close combat, he would have had no way to damage the Incineroar. Yeah, and unfortunately for Wolf, you can see just how much damage the Surging Strikes will do here. It's possible, depending on how his Urshifu is trained, that there might be one more turn left in this game. But even with oh! additional defense drops... But he has Aqua Jet! He has Aqua Jet! Oh, it's not enough. Close combat, not enough to KO Urshifu, but unfortunately for Wolf, Neil is not running Choice Scarf Urshifu. He has the option to switch up his attacks, and Aqua Jet here is enough to get Neil game one of this finals match here in Orlando, Florida. Coming down once to the once again to the wire for both of these Pokemon trainers. Neil staying calm, cool, and collected and finding that win condition really in thanks to the flexibility that Mystic Water gives him on that Urshifu. You could see Wolf pivot out that his own Urshifu trying to ensure that he can make a correct choice when it comes to the point when you have to pick that final move to lock into. But because he was unable to match the priority of that Aqua Jet, just his Pokemon taken down. It really was the fact that Neil had the option to switch moves there. We saw it go for a big close combat to KO the, the Amoongus on Wolf's side of the field, which allowed for no more spores to be thrown out, no more sludge bombs to get some more chip damage. And of course, the Aqua Jet came through that KO'd the Landorus. The flexibility of that Mystic Water, and of course, the power boost from Mystic Water as well, powering up the Aqua Jet, which could have been a difference maker in KOing that Landorus at the very end of that game. Yeah, and it, even though there was a little bit of luck on Wolf's side, you know, we saw that poison come through from the sludge bomb. Uh, it just could not match the momentum that Neil had. And I think going into game number two, I do wonder how Wolf is going to switch things up a bit. I feel like he does have to bring his Urshifu regardless because it does match up so well in, against the Incineroar, against that Ogre Pond, really forces terastalizations in those situations. But it struggled to find purchase throughout the rest of the match otherwise. It did. Even with this great play Wolf made, predicting the Sacred Sword coming out from Chien Pao to K Oh, it with the sludge bomb Amoongus, it ended up not being enough just because the Urshifu on Neil's side had the power to go for that close combat. He, Neil had to fake out on deck just in time to prevent Landorus from going for the big Earth Power to KO that Urshifu. And of course, Unseen Fist made it so difficult for Wolf to pivot around. 
A big adjustment from Wolf as we jump straight into game number two. It's going to be the Landorus Incarnate and Incineroar lead for him against the Ogre Pond and Incineroar once again for Neil. Really like this adjustment. This Landorus is now facing, you know, a fire type and a fire type, both of which really don't want to be taking the earth powers. Of course, you do have the grass typing to make sure that earth power is not super effective, and then you have to worry about Sludge Bomb instead. And again, like we saw earlier on in this match, we are pretty sure that Wolf's Incineroar is likely faster than Neil's just based on how the Intimidates are playing out. We did see Wolf's Intimidate go first in both of these games. So fake out advantage to Wolf, but of course if you choose to fake out the Incineroar on Neil's side of the field, you still have to worry about that Ogre Pond. You do, and just seeing how game number one played out, I don't know if you can necessarily risk getting so much damage down onto your Landorus Incarnate in turn one of this game. You probably want to try and match the fake out pressure of your own Pokemon, but we do get a turn one terrestrialization from Neil going straight for that Hearth Flame Mask and Body Aspect activation to boost up Ogre Pond's attack to negate the attack drop from Intimidate. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice little reset there from Neil. Fake out goes into his own Incineroar, which flinches next. Ivy Cudgel coming out. This is a neutral Terrifier boosted Ivy Cudgel into the Landorus on Wolf's end. And Landorus oh. is able to take that attack oh, and fire huge. back in Earth Power. That's now super effective. Gets the one hit KO in return. Great turn of events there for Wolf. That is terrestrialization immediately gone for Neil. It was such a big part of that first game, which forced Wolf not to lock into close combat because the Incineroar was a ghost type. But that is now just gone. The, uh, the Ogre Pond itself is gone, a huge source of damage. And now Wolf has an immediate four to three Pokemon advantage. Urshifu coming in here actually in a very good spot, thanks to the lower health on Landorus. Obviously, huge threat always into Incineroar. But you cannot discount the huge advantage Wolf just gave himself with that turn one, making sure your Landorus is protected from a fake out from Neil's own Incineroar and getting that huge Earth Power KO. Recognizing the importance of this Landorus in this matchup, Wolf switches it out to send in his own Urshifu. It's actually a double switch going to send in the Amoongus, who can take those water type attacks from the Urshifu so much more comfortably. It's very comfortable, especially considering there is no Flare Blitz on Neil's Incineroar. The Amoongus switch here is very hard to punish because there's no way you have to KO it on this turn. Surging Strikes come through, three hits into Amoongus. Luckily for Neil is not that Rocky Helmet set, but he does knock off Wolf's Incineroar's Choice Scarf, which I think in this scenario, actually not that bad. You give yourself the option to switch up your moves. Yeah, I was gonna say, going back to game number one, it was ultimately the fact that the Urshifu was locked into an attack that gave Neil the advantage. That is no longer a restriction for Wolf. Yes, it is going to be naturally a bit slower now because you don't benefit from the speed boost, but it is still a bit more flexible, which is going to be so important, especially knowing that Neil's last Pokemon this time is Rillaboom. Rillaboom now hits the field, sets up the grassy terrain, and is threatening some big damage into Urshifu, but a big close combat straight into that Rillaboom slot from Wolf's Urshifu that has over half of Rillaboom's HP immediately gone. And a With a Sludge Bomb, bomb too! That's enough to pick up the KO on that Rillaboom on the switch! That was a fantastic prediction from Wolf! It's so hard to punish that too. Close combat does a huge amount of damage to that Incineroar, and really nothing in the back from Neil wants to take the combination of those two attacks. Wolf very smartly going for that double target, knowing that Amoongus is really not threatened by anything at this point, because I cannot reiterate enough the importance of Neil's Incineroar not carrying Flare Blitz. This Amoongus is in such a great spot right now, especially considering there's no more option for Neil to switch. If Urshifu gets put to sleep, it can't swap out, try to get something more productive onto the field. This is a big 180 for Wolf here in this second game. And in recognition of that fact, I think Neil actually just locked in a forfeit in this game number two. Wolf has all four Pokemon of his remaining. And even though Neil arguably has one of the best attackers on his team available to him, that Urshifu with the Mystic Water 
is not powerful enough to power through the Amoongus on its own. And just like that, we're heading into a game three in this finals. We are. Frankly, that Amoongus was going nowhere for the rest of this game. It still had Citrus Berry, it had the Grassy Terrain Recovery, it had Regenerator all available to it. And at the same time, it could redirect really anything from that Urshifu until Wolf was able to get something onto the field to KO it. Really, really well played game from Wolf there. The Ivy Cudgel not scoring a critical hit here. Really a difference maker because we did not have that focus energy boost just yet. It was still that just slightly raised chance, but not very raised, and a big Earth Power KO in return. Kind of the, the terrestrialization there coming around to bite Neil because if it was not terrestrialized, probably able to survive one Earth Power, just maybe. For sure, yeah. So really big swing there that Neil took, but it unfortunately did not pay off. And talk about big swings. I mean, Wolf doubled into that slot, yeah. anticipating not just the Rillaboom making an appearance there, that's a Pokemon adjustment, yeah, but also true. optimizing for the damage in that position as well. That was such an incredible read from Wolf, as really there was no indication at that point in the game that it was that Rillaboom that was present in the back of Neil's party. There wasn't, but even if you think about the Pokemon Neil brought to the first game, if the Chan Palace, which is in there instead, for example, it gets immediately taken down to Focus Ash and then KO'd there. So a really smart double up, really just guaranteeing damage. Obviously the Urshifu will attack through Protect regardless, but Amoongus cannot. So if you want to double target a slot, you double target the one that cannot protect, cannot terrestrialize, cannot avoid damage, just like Wolf did there. All right, well, these trainers are ready to go into game number three. Let's make some noise. Let's get the hype going as it's Amoongus and Incineroar on the field for Wolf against the Ogre Pond and the Rillaboom for Neil. I think immediate advantage to Wolf here just because you get a crucial Intimidate down onto Ogre Pond and Rillaboom right off the bat. Starting off the game at minus one attack. Neil now actually is the one with the fake out advantage though because Rillaboom should be faster than this Incineroar. Will have the option to dictate which of Wolf's Pokemon to possibly flinch from Fake Out. And of course, the Rillaboom, the Ogre Pond on Neil's side, not very heavily threatened by anything right now, could possibly take the chance to go straight for that Focus Energy. And I think getting that Focus Energy in early would also mean that the Ogre Pond is more likely to score those critical hits and really puts a lot of pressure on Wolf from a board position as well. Because if you know that your opponent has essentially a coin flip to deal a massive amount of damage to avoid any stat drops, to just play around those Ooh. complications, you definitely don't want them to take that. But we see a Pokemon adjustment nice. from Wolf. Tornadus will take the field, will lose its Focus Sash for its trouble. But seeing that Ogre Pond went for a Focus Energy poison? with the Sludge Bone oh. and the Poison, that's the best you could hope for from that turn for Wolf. 100%, Gabby. That is a massive switch there. Wolf has not brought Tornadus to either of these first two games, and it pays off immediately. Neil leading the two Grass-type Pokemon on his team is the perfect situation you want to find your Tornadus in. Now you have the option to go for a possible Tailwind, set your Pokemon up for a speed advantage later on. Even a Bleak Wind Storm here would be really, really good. This Ogre Pond is now at the boosted uh, critical hit rate from Focus Energy, but it is still only a 50% chance to score a critical hit. So it's not guaranteed that that Focus Energy will pay off, especially because the Sludge Bomb came through, dealt a ton of damage, and crucially put this Ogre Pond on a timer. Some people may also be wondering if Wolf is considering a Rain Dance on that Tornadus to try and weaken the Fire-type attacks from that Ogre Pond. But without confirmation about whether or not Neil's owner Shifu is on the field just yet, that is too risky of a play to make. Bleak Wind Storm oh, will no. not connect with the Rillaboom nor the Ogre Pond. Woodhammer, though, into the Tornadus for a good amount of damage. Now this Amoongus' Sludge Bomb oh. will not connect with the spiky shield on the Ogre Pond. You have to respect the double into that slot if you're Wolf. You know, if you're using Bleak Wind Storm, it comes with the possible chance of missing like we did just see. And you, you cover for a Bleak Wind Storm missing Ogre Pond there. Unfortunately, you can't cover for missing the Rillaboom in that scenario, which does get some decent damage into Tornadus. But thankfully, Tornadus should still have the option to go for one final attack if it chooses to. The Tailwind with the Prankster ability will act first. And the, the Grassy Glide from Ogre Pond on Neil's side might try to go first, but without enough damage to KO it, it will not go down even with the critical hit. That Tornadus is unfortunately unable to go for a Bleak Wind Storm this turn as it will be taken down by those two priority Grassy Glides. 
but you trade your speed control Pokemon to knock out that critical hit boosted Ogre Pond. I think that's the best trade that Wolf could get in this situation. Not a bad trade at all. Seeing Neil's last two Pokemon, it will be the Urshifu and the Chen Pao. And considering Neil only has three physical attackers remaining, the Incineroar on Wolf's side will be very important for the rest of this match. Rillaboom and Chan Pao again, both physical attackers. Rillaboom now down to minus two attack from that first Intimidate and Chan Pao at minus one. The, Rilla, the Amoongus on Wolf's side here, we saw it be so important against the Chan Pao earlier on in this match, especially if you do opt for the Water Trastalization, which would be very handy coming in against this Chan Pao. However, you do still have to worry about the Rillaboom's grass type attack. Sacred Sword from Chen Pao into the opposing Incineroar to drop it down to below half its health, but the combination oh. with the high horsepower, Incineroar is able to hold on. Flare Blitz is oh, a one-hit one -hit knockout on that Rillaboom. Wolf will lose the Incineroar with recoil damage as a result, but talk about a great trade. Now the Zamungus is free to Terrastalize, and he gets the Spore in as well. I'm 100% okay taking that trade if I am Wolf. That is a massive survival from the Sacred Sword and the high horsepower combination, and of course, a huge one-hit KO into that Rillaboom. Now Neil and Wolf are both down to their final two Pokemon, but Landorus coming in. There is nothing that can protect this Urshifu from a possible Earth power. Landorus is a very, very strong Pokemon, and unless Urshifu is trained to be incredibly specially bulky, a combination of Rage Powder to prevent an Aqua Jet into that Landorus slot and an Earth power could be enough straight up for a KO here. Both these trainers are down to their final two Pokemon. And remember, the title of a regional champion is on the line. And that's why you see Neil playing to every possible out. Will go for that stellar terrestrialization to boost the power of Chen Pao's attacks once it wakes up from its sleep. You have to wonder why Neil opted for the Trustalization there. This Chen Pao cannot possibly wake up on this turn, Gabby. There is no way this Chen Pao attacks, and this Trustalization cannot come in handy for at least one more turn. Landor is instead going immediately for a Trustalization of its own to protect itself from a possible Aqua Jet coming out from this Urshifu. Earth Power into Chen Pao brings it down to its Focus Sash. Chen Pao barely able to hang on. Her Shifu surging strikes into the Landorus with the Terrastalization. It's going to be enough to knock it out. It's enough for a KO into Landorus, but I think that's all Wolf needs was that Earth Power into Chen Pao. Really smart targeting there because if Sludge Bomb comes through to KO this Chen Pao, it will be a 1v1 Urshifu versus Amoongus. And that is exactly what Wolf wants. Amoongus is not the most offensive Pokemon that you would think of in the Regulation F metagame, but it is the Pokemon that's carrying Wolf Glick's hopes and dreams of a repeat regional win in this season. Urshifu on the other side of the field, the Pokemon yeah. you think of for Regulation F and VGC, trying to find an opportunity, find the damage it needs to take this Amoongus down. I really just want to call out how smart that Trastalization from Landorus was for Wolf on that prior turn. Doing that means that it drops the water type weakness. Even though we saw it get knocked out by Surging Strikes anyway, it couldn't possibly be knocked out by Aqua Jet. All Wolf needed was one Earth Power into the Chan Pao, which could not wake up, could not protect. It's guaranteed damage. The combination from that and Earth Power and Sludge Bomb from the Amoongus enough to KO it. And Wolf very confident, just like we are, Gabby, that I think this Amoongus can 1v1 the Urshifu, especially considering it just got put to sleep. It's got to take a couple turns to wake up. And this Amoongus still has the Citrus Berry at its disposal. It still has the Citrus Berry, and it is running Sludge Bomb, which looks like it will be about a three to four hit KO, depending oh, on turn. how much damage it does. We see the Urshifu wake up after a single turn of sleep will activate the Citrus Berry on this Amoongus. But I think the most important thing to look for here is just when will that Amoongus be in close combat range? As the odds that Wolf went for a Spore this turn are so, so low. They really are. Sludge Bomb comes through, and I think the worst thing that can happen is a Poison here for Wolf, because you really, really want to put it back to sleep this turn. If it was Poison, that is not an option. Surging Strikes comes back through here from this Urshifu. Will attempt to put Amoongus in close combat Combat range, Gabby, like you called out, close combat, despite the critical hits from surging strikes, is slightly stronger at the end of the day. 
it looks like both these trainers have heads up waiting to see how this game will play out. I think this is one of those situations where Neil knows that he has to keep clicking surging strikes until it's close combat range. Wolf knows that he needs maybe two more sludge bombs to knock out this Pokemon. Oh, Here comes the first one, six HP. Up? We saw it wake up after one turn earlier. Will it wake up again? This is the turn that will decide your Orlando oh. Regional Champion. And it is the Urshifu close combat. Come it's not a Mugus. It holds on. It holds on through that attack. A Mugus should have plenty of time to return and knock Woo. out with that sludge bomb. And Wolf Flick <laughs> is now your 2023 and 2024 Orlando Regional Champion. What an insane end game there, Gabby. Wolf played that so incredibly well just knowing how exactly he needed to target his attacks. Getting the Earth Power Sludge Bomb KO on Xi'an Pao as much as- There it is, Wolf Glick twice on this list, the first player to be repeating 